like people to get out of the mindset that they need to teach people to do everything. If you can empower them to follow a guide, you will make your life and their life much easier. Hi there, I'm Charlie, your online business manager. My goal is to assist small to medium business owners build their businesses with a focus on using the internet and online technologies in an appropriate and cost-effective manner. People hire me to take the stress out of managing their businesses and allow themselves to focus on what they do best. This week's guest is Greg, and I didn't check how to pronounce your last name. Is it Devore? That's correct, yeah. Excellent. Greg is an author, co-founder, and CEO of Screen Steps, a software platform for transferring knowledge faster. I'm not going to tell you a lot more about Greg because he's got a lot to share with us today, and I like to get my guests to tell us about themselves rather than me banging on about it all here. So, Greg, look, thanks so much for coming on today. I, I really appreciate it. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I am an entrepreneur as well, small business owner that's uh, grown a little bit over the years. We've had screen steps for a little over 20 years. Uh, it was a family owned business. I, do, I started with my brothers and we've hired some more people since then, but also authored a book about how to solve that problem that business owners have of when you hire people to come in and help you in the business, how do you transfer knowledge to them in a way that they can really work independently and take that load off of you instead of you constantly having to stand over their shoulder and show them how to do this and that and the other thing. So we've been working in this for 20 years of, of really trying to refine that science of what is the best way to rapidly transfer knowledge to new employees. Okay, now that's pretty impressive. 20 years doing this is really, really impressive. I've been in this business for 17 years. Um, I've been in IT for a bit longer, not a lot longer. Um, <laughs> so 20 years of actually doing something like this sounds amazing. But before we get into that, you were telling me you were from Washington, D.C.? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So why don't yeah. you tell us a little bit about living there? So I live just outside of Washington, D.C. in McLean, Virginia. Um, beautiful area. It's, uh, you know, we're a couple of miles from the White House if you could fly there, but uh, about a 40-minute drive if you have to deal with the traffic. Uh, but it's a great place to live. Um, uh, beautiful area, very green. You know, 10, 15 minutes, you can be, you're, you're in a national park and you feel like you're nowhere near the city. And then, you know, another 40 minutes the other way, you can be right downtown. We've been here for about 17 years, also lived in Los Angeles and Boston, grew up in, in Salt Lake City, Utah. Wow, that's that's a bit of a variety right there. So um, yeah. I do love that you can sort of go one way and be in out of the city and one way and in the city. That that sounds like my type of living, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah, it's so, a great spot. Um, I, I have an interest in how you started 20 years ago with screen steps so i don't know whether we want to start there or whether you want us to tell us tell us a little bit about screen steps or tell me about how you actually started out because 20 years ago the types of technologies we're talking about today simply didn't exist so where did this all start well, it was very much by accident so i actually have a, a music degree a film scoring degree from the berkeley college of music so my original career was in film composition, arranging, orchestration. And I, we were, my wife and I were visiting my family in Salt Lake over Christmas from Boston. And my first son was born three and a half months premature, very tiny, and had some complications with that. So as I started continuing my career in the music industry, they said, you know, as long as you're working as an independent musician, you're never going to be able to get health insurance for your son. Uh, you know, they're just, nobody's going to cover you. So I had to change careers. And in the U S at the time, if you were in a business that had two employees, then health insurance companies couldn't deny you insurance. They could charge you a ton of money, but they couldn't deny it to you. So my brother and I started the business really at first just to get health insurance. Um, and we had this crazy opportunity come up that G medical systems asked us, to build some interactive training for their 3D, 4D ultrasound systems. Kind of fell out of the blue to us. 
I had done some training in the music industry. My brother was a programmer. And so we sat down and we started looking at what were the problems with their training and tried to come at it with a totally fresh set of eyes. And what we discovered is they had these $200,000 ultrasound systems and they'd fly people out to New York City or all these places to train them for three days. But when you went back to the medical office, this ultrasound machine had sticky notes all over it. And the sticky notes were because they couldn't remember all the different things that they'd been taught to do. And we thought, okay, wait a minute, why are we wasting all this time in training courses, these really expensive training courses, when people don't remember anything they're taught? Okay. What if we just made a better sticky note? And so we built some technology then, it was on CD-ROMs at the time, and it would connect to the internet and update, and, and you know, it was very old school stuff, but it was designed so that it was very visual and very step-by-step -step like a recipe, instead of just kind of dumping knowledge on you. That evolved over time into what we have today, which is an online knowledge operations platform where you can create not just documentation, but interactive guides that really guide employees through a process of any complexity and puts it in a way that they can use it or follow that procedure without having to go back to their boss for assistance. And so we're really, re we're making a better version of that sticky note on their computer. Awesome. That looked, I, I was fascinated to know how you did it 20 years ago because uh, I, I've been doing this for a long time and that's been my biggest issue is how do I get all my documentation together? How do I get the step-by-step, -step, let me lead you through it um, together? And 20 years ago, that was really, really hard. I mean, the best I had was screenshots, maybe even taking photos of the screen the computer screens yeah. printing out the photos and putting them into documents so people could walk through them uh, but I, I think one of the things you've said there that sounds it's a big challenge for most of us is yeah, you, you give people your training they do their training you say here's how to do it here's the guide like here's my guide on how you do it and they still come back to you they still come back to you and say, I, I don't get it. I'm like, well, did you read it? Well, yeah, but I don't get it. So how can we talk a little bit about those sorts of challenges that business owners might experience? Um, we can talk about how your your product actually addresses that. But what have you found just in the way in the way you do things that to address those sorts of issues? Really, if we've found that we are not naturally good at writing documentation. And we're not naturally good at following documentation. So there's skills that we don't really practice much, but they're super valuable. If we get it right, it really can, it, it gives us so much time back into our lives and into our business, makes everybody more productive. But we don't really spend that much time thinking about it. When we sit down to write documentation, we just start writing stuff. We'll throw in images or we might record a video. And when we start doing documentation or having somebody use it, we just send it to them and say, read it. And well, people aren't very good actually at doing that. So over the years, we would have customers that some would do really, really well. And others, nobody's using their stuff. They've written all this documentation. Nobody's looking at it. So we went back several years ago and decided to really embed on the teams that were doing well and try to extract principles. Because a lot of times they didn't know why it was working. It was just working. So we, we extracted those principles and we built a methodology. It's called Find and Follow. And that's the book that we wrote, released it uh, about six months ago. It's called Find and Follow, Reducing Supervisor Burnout and Improving Employee Performance by Transferring Knowledge Faster. So it's a recipe on how to write documentation and then how to train employees to follow it. And what we found is that a lot of our, our preconceived notions about how we write documentation, how we use it, are all wrong. And when you get it right, then it's really powerful and people can really excel. So was there one thing that you noticed in all of that that people did differently or was it just a series of things? So we would find that one thing would work at somebody's place, but then we would take it out and we'd apply it somewhere else and it didn't quite work. So we had to tweak it again and we had to keep tweaking it. So it got to a place where it applied everywhere. And finally, we got to a, a place where everybody who's applied this methodology has been extremely successful. Like, for example, you know, 
organizations where it was taking eight weeks to onboard a new employee that went down to one week. You know, that's a huge difference going, you know, seven weeks faster of someone being onboarded. You'll see employees double in productivity. And the key insight is we have to write documentation, not so it's just going to be used one time. We have to write it so in with the idea that it's going to be used a hundred times. The big mistake we make when we write documentation is we try to put all the information in there because it has to teach and it has to, it has to guide them at the same time. And that's a big mistake. It's too much for the brain to take on first. And then later on, if we already know half of what's in the guide, we don't want to use it. So we just skip it. We go back to working from memory. And that's when we make mistakes because our memories aren't as good as we think they are. So one of the key parts of our framework is when we're writing documentation, we separate out foundational knowledge and actual knowledge. Foundational knowledge is all the background information I would need to follow a checklist or a recipe. So it's the who, it's the what, it's the why. Pull that all out into a separate document or a video course or whatever that is. That information the employee has to know. But the recipe, the step-by-step, -step, they don't need to memorize that. They should be able to use that guide every single time they're following that procedure. And if we pull out all the foundational knowledge, all of a sudden, the instructions get a lot clearer. It's much easier to scan. It's much, much easier to follow. And it's easier to keep up to date because the foundational stuff doesn't change that often, that background information. It's the procedural stuff that changes. So if we separate those two out, we can write documentation that is much easier for an employee to follow independently. So I, I actually really, really like that. I used to, in another life, um, train people to train their dogs. And yeah. that was part of our training process was this is why you want to do it. Okay, now we've told you why you want to do it. Let's now talk about how you do it and give you the steps and give you steps that you can go back to every time and just keep doing it until the animal gets it. And if the animal backslides, you can do it all again. You can just keep yeah. re um, repeating it. Uh, and that had massive, massive impact because people were like, yeah, we like this. We can do this. I mean, even just a one-page sheet, we could give them to take home with them. Do this, do this, do this. Um, yeah. But you're right because people don't like reading documents. And when you when you get a manual that's this big, I mean, I know myself. You give me a manual this big, I'm not going to read it. Yeah. I I want the cliff notes. <laughs> I want the cliff yep. notes. I want the I want the exact summary up the front. Give me all the data in the back. That's fine, but don't expect me to read that because I'm not going to. That's not my style. No, and really, we shouldn't have to become experts at everything to perform like an expert in a process. If I'm working in a business, I shouldn't have to be an expert in every system that, that every CRM tool and marketing tool and analytics tool. Why do I have to be an expert at all of those just to perform tasks? If I have clear recipes, like if I'm learning to cook, I don't have to be a master chef to cook a very good meal because if I understand some basic yeah. principles and I can follow a recipe, then I can do that. And that's the environment we want to create in our businesses. That's where somebody can gain confidence really quickly. They can become proficient very quickly. And then they'll figure out all those details. You know, when they're not feeling confused all the time, they'll start to understand and really become an expert much faster. Yeah, I really, I really like that. And you're right, because they might touch on all of those different systems, but they don't need to know them beyond log in here, fill in these boxes, log out. Anything more than that, I don't even know if they really care anymore <laughs> and they just want to know how to do their job. Exactly. And what's funny when we, so part of the framework we have is the very first thing we find that people document the wrong things. So when you sit down to document something, you think, well, what are all the things that somebody needs to know? And that's the wrong question to ask. What you want to start is with is what do they need to be able to do? So we have a workshop that you go through and you analyze, okay, what are all the tasks they have to perform, the questions they have to answer, the problems they have to solve. That becomes a list of documentation you're gonna create and you create an art, a guide for each one. So you don't write like this big thing on you know, HubSpot, you write, here's how you create a new campaign or here's how you 
um, close out a deal or here's how you mark a contact as, as X, Y, or Z. Those are the tasks you want to think of. What are the triggers? Like, what do they be asked to do? What are the prompts that are, are okay. triggering those things? And you have guides that match the triggers instead of just talking about what they need to know. And when you do that and you document those things, now you've got that one-to-one -one mapping of things I'm being, being asked to do and the recipe I need to do it. That's amazing. I absolutely love that. Um, okay, so you, you you had this application process that you created 20 years ago. Has that changed a lot? Like I know the price, the process hasn't changed. Well, I'm assuming the process has changed because everything evolves. But yeah. has the delivery of that changed? Like I, I, I you about writing documentation do employees still need and team members still need physical documentation like something they can put their hands on taste touch smell whatever or have you does it move now more to the electronic um digital delivery age oh what we can do digitally far surpasses what we could do with paper i mean with paper a physical documentation there's a limit to the type of recipe you can create. So, you know, if your business is very simple, then paper documentation, if you're, I guess say, if your business is simple and the procedures don't change that often, then yeah, you can have a binder with paper in or printed documentation. But if it's changing rapidly or there's complexity in it, then paper just doesn't work. So what we can do with the software now is we can do two things. One, if people are using the guides every single time they perform a task, I can update that guide and the employee will instantly adapt to those changes. We do that all the time in our business. Like a procedure will change. I don't even have to, I don't have to have somebody retrain me on it because I'm going to bring up that guide and the guide is going to guide me through it. Secondly, though, we do three types of guides in our system. So you have your standard articles, your standard how-to or reference article. Then you have interactive checklists. So interactive checklists is a straightforward procedure but you need to design the article so that they work for the first time user and the more experienced user. An interactive checklist will allow you to have the high level checklist items and the more experienced person can just go through that. But the less experienced person can expand out each checklist item to get click by click details of what they need to do. And so we're making them, we're meeting the needs of both the experienced employee and the less experienced employee. And then finally we have decision trees. And this is like if, if I say, well, how do I do this? And you say, well, it depends. Well, this will ask me questions and then based on my answers will guide me through the procedure. We can't really do that effectively on paper. We can't hide and expose content effectively on paper. And it's really powerful when we do that because we're reducing the cognitive load on the employee who's following the documentation. We say in our system, everything has to be findable, followable, scannable meaning they have to be able to find it in five seconds. They have to be able to follow it without needing help from their boss. And they need to be able to scan it so they don't have to stop what they're doing and read a lot of instructions. They should be able to just work through their flow, scanning, just being presented with the information they need in that moment of the procedure. Awesome. Okay, that, that makes a heap of sense. And um, yeah, I, I figured that might have been part of the answer because there is yeah. so much you can do uh, with the digital age. Part of my question then would be, um, because we've still got a, a blend in our workforce, we've still got the older generation that might or might not be resistant to digital technology. And we've got the younger generation who I'm not sure if they pick up books anymore. <laughs> they, they, they do everything through, through the screens. Um, how, how does that work out? Do, do you find that there are issues with, 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 that, with that blending? Yeah, so there are. They, it's, it's a different way of working. Like I said, we're not only not very good at writing documentation, we're not very good at using it, at, at reading it. So part of the framework we have is when you train and onboard a new employee, you're not training them to memorize a bunch of information, but you're actually getting them confident using your guides. So if I were to train you in our business, you would come in, you would go through a 15 to 20 minute course on a topic. And that course would just be foundational knowledge. It'd be like, what's, what's this software you're going to use? Why do we use it? 
high level, what types of tasks are you going to do there? And then 80% of your time would be spent in practice activities. So I'd give you a task and I wouldn't tell you how to do it. You'd have to search in screen steps and you'd follow it. And the first time you follow it, you're going to make all sorts of mistakes. You're going to be all over the place. You're going to be skipping steps. You're going to be winging it. And I'm not going to jump in and help you at all. Not because I'm mean, but I'm going to wait till you get through and I'm going to say, okay, that was, you made some errors there. Let's try that again. Pay a little more attention this time. You'll go back and you'll do better. You'll still stumble, but you'll do better. Then I'll say, try it one more time. And by the third or fourth time, you're going to learn that you can really trust this guide, that it really has the information you have in there. And what you're doing is you're gaining the skill of following the guide and confidence that you can follow the guide. And so whether the person's older or younger, as they go through that process, they gain confidence in navigating those guides and trusting them. And then they are able to go on to the next task and the next task and the next task. And it almost doesn't matter anymore because they've learned to follow a GPS and they can go anywhere as long as the guide is there. That makes a heap of sense. Yeah. All right. Um, and do you, do you do this sort of on the computer, on the phone, on the tablets? Is it portable? We do. So our system will work, you know, in a mobile device, on a tablet, on the computer itself. So it really depends. We help. We have a browser extension so it can even be contextualized into the web apps that people use. It really depends on, you know, that employee, the environment they're going to be working in and making sure that it's, it's you know, that they've got it in the right place there. But there's a lot of options to help them do that. Awesome. Yeah, I was I was thinking... I, I can see applications for this for um, people who work in warehouses and stores and uh, where they're not in front of a computer, but they've got to follow a process. So having it on their phone where they can just go tick, 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 yep, I've got it. Thank you. Put the phone down, go and do what I need to do would make a heap of sense. Like I, I can see applications for this across the board. I ran retail stores. I trained with techs. I've worked with techs. I've been a tech. Um, <laughs> I, I've <laughs> trained people to train dogs. You know, like just, and I can see where your applications are for that because everyone needs to be trained. People don't come in and know. Well, they don't know. That's the point. <laughs> they don't know. Well, when we remove the need to have everything memorized, we really open up a lot of um, mental bandwidth. So we talked with, you know, we had one customer it would take them a year to get someone to a place where they were proficient, very complex environment to work in. They reduce that down to 60 days. And so you go from 10 months off that time. And they said, the thing that's really changed about their training is before they had to spend all this time teaching people how to do things. They never got to the point where they were teaching them the why behind anything. And now those in those two months, they're able to spend much more time on the why behind things because the how is all taken care of in the digital guides. And it's led to, they said it's just been a total culture change in the organization. Employees are so much more confident. They're engaged. They contribute back to improving the procedures. They understand their environment more so they can, they can be more proactive there. It's, it's taken a place where everybody felt like, I don't know what I'm doing to we can all pitch in and make this a better, you know, improve our customers, improve our, our business there. So it's exciting to see what happens when you take back that time, you take back that mental bandwidth, and you are able to redeploy it for better uses. So, yeah, I mean, not only are you getting people out and I'm going to use the term billable um, in inverted commas. Um, you know, you, you're making them, con well, you're getting them to contribute to your business quicker. I, I yeah. actually think it's a really interesting thing about the why. I mean, sometimes you want to teach people the why, but you're too busy. You're just too tied up in, no, you've just got to follow this process and just keep following this process and just keep, yeah, okay. Yeah, I know you want to know why, but I can't tell you because we're too busy. <laughs> um, we never get to it. So the, and have you seen that in a number of businesses then, the culture change that comes through that? Because I, I imagine having people who know what they're doing and understand why the company is doing it, you end up with a really engaged workforce. Yeah. Yeah, This uh, you see a lot of things. One, you see stress go down dramatically 
because we, you know, when we're working from memory, we're worried we're doing something wrong or we're going to forget something or make a mistake. So the confidence level goes up, the stress level goes down. For the supervisors or the, the employers, the bosses, they get so much bandwidth back in their days. I mean, we had one person say, I can finally go on vacation. I never felt like I could go on vacation before because I would just get calls all the time. And I, yes. I couldn't be away from anything. And now they're able to leave and things can function without them. Um, we had another group. They had a slightly larger organization. They had all these supervisors that all they did all day was answer questions. After they went through this, they had to go back and retrain their supervisors because they had nothing to do. Employees were independent now and they weren't answering questions. They'd never actually been trained to supervise people. So now they're able to go back and really teach them, here's how you function as a supervisor, not just as a walking answer machine, which is all you had to do, you know, you were having to do before. So there's lots of changes into the business. It changes how quickly you can adapt changes into your business. There's organizations that are scared to, to bring on a new CRM, even if it would be better because they don't want to go retrain everybody. And so now I can be very agile. I can adopt a new procedure and people will adapt to it. We had a group, it would take two weeks at least for them to adapt to change. They got that down to an hour. And now, you, I mean, think about it. When you go from two weeks of, of uh, a change of procedure down to less than an hour, you can be much more agile as a business. So it, it impacts just so many aspects of what you do. I, I can think of businesses where that, that agility uh, makes such a difference like in the IT industry particularly when uh, a new patch comes out and it changes a command line or it changes uh, just one little thing in a process and it might just be one click that you've got to do differently <laughs> but you've got to get that out to people and then you spend like I spend hours sometimes going no 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 that that change yes I know you didn't see it because there were yeah. all these emails in your inboxes from the provider yeah the, you've just got to do oh is that all i've got to do and off they go but you know i might do that five or six or seven times with 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 someone um i actually found it really interesting and i noticed it's part of your um title of your book to reduce supervisor burnout and actually rejigging what your supervisors are doing um i don't think people even think about that as as a uh one of the detriments to, to to these things that we we do like your supervisors are just busy uh people realize your supervisors can't go on holidays i mean i know they realize that but they don't know how to address it um no, no you have so, supervisors that will they'll, they'll be you know they're logging back on to work at nine or ten or night to do their normal work because all day all they did was answer questions they never got to their actual priorities and so they're working after hours just to stay afloat and then look at the quality of their output would be considerably reduced at that point because all they want to do is get it done so that they can get some yeah. time for themselves um and honestly tired staff do not perform well tired and burnt out staff don't don't perform well okay so um tell us a little bit then about screen steps itself how to tell us how people find out about it, um, how, how people can engage in it, engage with your business. Yeah. So if they go to screensteps.com, you know, we have uh, demo videos, a lot of information on there. If they go to find and follow book.com, that is the find and follow book. And we have free courses on the concepts of the, uh, the principle there. If anybody wants to find me, I'm on LinkedIn, Greg DeVore. I'm pretty active on there and uh, I'm happy to talk to anyone who just wants some tips on on how to do this better in their business because it really it is so exciting. My, my favorite story is we I talked about that one business that would take a year, you know, for someone to be get proficient. Well, they had an employee. They've been there a long time, always had to escalate all these things that came in. They went through the find and follow training and this this issue came across her desk and her supervisor saw she was about to escalate it again. And the supervisor said, no, you can do this. You can do this. So she brings up the guide and screen steps. She handles the call. She handles the situation. It's super complex, but she gets through it. She hangs up and she jumps up out of her chair, twirls around, puts her fist in the air and says, I did it. And so it's so exciting when you get people to that moment 
of when they really feel like I can do this on my own. So if we can help businesses do that, that's that's what's really rewarding. That's fantastic. And I'm going to make sure I've got all of this information in the show notes so that people can uh, find find you. Um, I will make sure we're connected on LinkedIn as well because I'm somewhat active on LinkedIn. Not as active as some, but I'm somewhat active on LinkedIn. Um, and find a follow book. I'm certainly going to go and follow that up as well. Now, you've given us lots of stories about the, the, you know, the, the positives and stuff. Have you got a story where you know, things just didn't go as well as they should have and you were able to use these processes to to, to recover them? Because I'm sure you've had the cases where <sighs> disasters happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that's, just part of, that's just part of our world. Yeah. Um, so we had a group started out well and then it went south. You know, did it, uh, things, things didn't go as well. So we had a group, they were starting up a brand new contact center and they got their their training time from six weeks down to two weeks very quickly. And after two Fantastic. weeks, these agents were coming out and their scores, their QA scores were 98%. They were doing fantastic. Um, wow. They were hitting all, their, hitting all their metrics for about three weeks after they came out of training. And then the stats started to drop. And we're like, wait a minute, what happened? Like they were doing so well, what happened that they were dropping? So our customer gave my brother who co-wrote the book with me, gave him permission to go interview the employees. And when he interviewed them, he found out that in previous jobs they'd been at, if they had to rely on documentation, they were frowned upon. It they, that was looked at it, you don't know your job. And so as they were going in and once they got kind of comfortable, they said, okay, well now I'm not gonna use this anymore because I wanna show them that I know this. And as soon as they did that, the performance dropped. So he came back to the management said, and they said, okay, let's go. Let's let them know. We want you using these every time. We don't want you working from memory. You're going to be more valuable to us if you can follow these guides than if you memorize these procedures that are changing all the time. And as soon as they got back into there, those, those uh, performance metrics went right back up. So it, you know, it was one of those situations where, oh, this was going so well, what happened? And, but we were able to get the root of it. And now we really advise our clients be right at the beginning. You've got, this is a cultural change and you've got to get rid of some preconceived notions in employees, yeah. or you can see that they, it'll get sabotaged. So, uh, I mean, some of the ways you would get around that would be to incentivize the use of the guides um, yeah. and reward. I mean, the positive reinforcement of, yep, great. We can see you're using the guide. Excuse my, excuse my sort of blase about it. Here's a chocolate bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> It, it's it's the trait that goes with the the good behavior to reinforce that good behavior. I suppose when you have new employees come in too, you know, a lot of employees and that when you said it, I'm like, yeah, that, that that would be right because I've seen it and I've seen employees come in and you go, that's not the way we work. Oh no, in my last job, this was really bad and I can't do this. So I'm going to have like, no, we don't want you to behave that way. Yeah. please we we behave differently here um so that that would be a real thing about bringing people in even if you've got these guides on the ground you've still got to do that cultural thing right up front don't you yeah and, and it's really interesting a lot of times if we're going into a business that already has some employees the tenured employees will say well we don't need this we already know what we're doing but this will be great for the new people every time i can't think of a time when this hasn't happened when the new employees come out they're twice as productive as the tenured employees, at least twice in productive, sometimes even more. And they're more consistent. Uh, and it, it, sometimes it creates problems because the new employees start correcting the tenured employees because they see they're, they're making mistakes. And so then the tenured employees start to realize, oh, wait a minute, this isn't about training. This is a different way of working. And then they'll go back through the training process and they adopt it as well. But a lot of us, we have this, this erroneous notion that if we memorize something, we will perform better, but it's just not true. We perform better. There's a great book on this called The Checklist Manifesto, and it, they did studies up at uh, in surgical centers. Highly trained doctors made fewer mistakes, worked better when they had checklists. It's the same thing in any job that we're working in. I, look, I, I would agree, and that would be my own personal experience. I've got checklists for just about everything I do, and um, when I don't use them, I middle of the night you're oh yep <laughs> and i have to go yep. back tomorrow and fix it straight away because it's like yep. i didn't do that 
because I haven't followed my list. I didn't follow the thing. And honestly, when you're under stress, your memory is one of the first things to go. Yeah. Um, it's just, and we don't me, know when our memory went. We That's the problem is we don't know when our memory went. We don't know until later on <laughs> when it's sometimes too and late. And sometimes, I was going to say, and sometimes it's actually catastrophic yeah. <laughs> when you find out that you didn't do something. Um, yeah, I, I can actually use the analogy like, um, I, I camp a lot and I, I actually traveling Australia at the moment and I have a camper van. So when I pack up my camper van, I've got a list of things that I have to check every time I pack up my camper van and I go through, have I done this? Have I done that? Have I done the next thing? Because the number of times I've got down the middle of the road and looked in the mirror, in the mirror and the um, outlet thingy is ba banging around in the wind because yeah. I didn't shut it properly. <laughs> and I, I didn't use my list. <laughs> <laughs> I just pulled well, the power out and didn't do the shut it down. Well, it becomes really powerful in your business too, because mistakes get made in businesses. But when you follow this system, the, there's either there's only two errors that there can be. Either the employee didn't use the guide or the guide wasn't complete. And we have analytics in our tools so you can know which it is. And so like we had, you know, two weeks ago, we had a mistake that was made. We went back and we looked at the guide and we found out the guide was missing a step for that scenario. Wasn't the employee's fault. It was the guide was missing a step. And so we improved the guide and the next time that that mistake will not happen again. And if you're just working from memory, you never get to that level of certainty. Yeah, look, I, I, that I would agree with. And as a troubleshooter as well, like this isn't working. I, well, can you tell me what you did? No. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I can't tell you. What do you mean you can't tell me? What? Well, I don't remember what I did. I, you know, I'm guilty of it too. It's like, Charlie, what did you do? Um, I pressed a button. <laughs> yep. It was a button and I pressed it. <laughs> um, and, and it's like, I should know what I did, but I don't. I wish I had a recorder so that I could go back through and see what yeah. I did. Um, so as a troubleshooter, that sort of thing really helps me as well. And I can imagine that with those with those sorts of procedures and and checklists if you've got something that starts failing like if it's a physical piece of equipment that starts failing and someone says well what what happens when it fails you can say well here's the steps that we follow we follow these steps yeah. every time that helps the troubleshooting process so many times so just the flow on effects of doing it as well it's not just making your pr um, employees productive it's not just making your supervisors not burn out and more 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 useful it's now about when things start failing you've and you've got to bring other people in you can help them help you quicker as well exactly we had one group they saved 2.3 million dollars for that very thing they were they had to troubleshoot medical devices over the phone, but before everybody did it a little bit differently. Well, with this, they got everybody doing it exactly the same and then they could improve the process. And so they dramatically decreased the number of machines that were getting shipped back that weren't really broken because they could be more consistent in their troubleshooting and in their shipping process. And so, you know, saved a ton of money just by standardizing and then optimizing. That is absolutely awesome. Okay, so I'm going to get all that information into the show notes. Uh, before we go any further, I do want to encourage people to come along and join my locals community. Being a business owner can be tough. Being a business owner who works remotely can get lonely and frustrating. That's why I started my locals community, a community for business owners that could be a bit like the water cooler of old. I want you to treat my locals community as a place where you not only get to interact with me, but with each other. You can gain inspiration, provide inspiration, ask for help, give help, get your processes down pat, talk about these sorts of things that we're talking about today and how you can streamline things. So come across and join me at askcharlieletham.locals.com. Back to us. Um, Greg, what's one thing that you would like people to take out of our conversation today? I would like people to get out of the mindset that they need to teach people to do everything. If you can empower them to follow a guide, you will make your life and their life much easier. If you still have like, I've got to teach everyone everything, how to do things, you're really limiting yourself. We don't need to memorize more to perform better. We actually perform better 
when we memorize less. That's so powerful. So don't try to memorize things. Write them down. Follow your list. Use the tools that come in and can help you. I actually do have a question um, before we go, and I don't know if you want to answer it or if you want to take it on notice or say, no, we can do that for another time. How is AI affecting what you're doing now? So AI is very exciting, but it's not in the way a lot of people think. So the, the challenge with using AI in procedures is that AI is very anxious to help you, but not very cautious about being correct. So it will <laughs> invent sometimes, you know? Uh, but it's all about AI is, is only as effective as the information it's given. And in your business, you're going to have a lot of what's called domain-specific knowledge. It's not stuff that AI has been trained on, on your internal procedures. Where we're using AI is to speed up that documentation process. So instead of having to sit down and write out documentation, I can talk and have it transcribed. And then AI can take that transcription of I just talked through the process and turn it into a recipe. So I can dramatically decrease the time it takes me to write and come up with something that is much more clear. We're also using in other ways, like I can take all these lists of these tasks and AI will say, hey, if somebody were needed to complete these tasks, this is the foundational knowledge they would need. So it can help me build out those foundational training courses. And there's other areas we're using it well, but what, really what we're doing is we're using AI to help people apply this find and follow framework in the correct way. That is such an awesome thing to use it for too. Um, and that's where I'm finding it really useful in my business. It's not you know, to do things for me, it's to give me information so that I can do them better and I know there's a lot of people out there and I'm talking I'm talking to my audience at the moment I know you guys are scared that AI is going to come along and do you out of a job it's not trust me you can use AI to do your job better to serve your customers and this is just a great example of how and yeah. a great practical example so thank you for taking that one on the fly that one was kind of dropped on you um but yeah, i am no fascinated i am absolutely fascinated with where the ai is going at the moment uh because there was so much stress about like there is a lot of stress around oh what's it going to do it's going to take over and no it's not smart enough to take over yet <laughs> might be in the future <laughs> not yet <laughs> Well, when you get this stuff right, though, you do, when you have that single source of truth, you're much better positioned to take advantage of AI tools in your business because AI has to be driven by knowledge. And if you don't, if all the knowledge is in your head, it's very hard for AI to work off of that. But when you've got it written down, then in the future, as other op uh, you know, options come out there, this single source of truth can, can help drive that. Absolutely. I love that. And that's probably going to end up in the clip <laughs> from this <laughs> interview. Look, Greg, thank you so much for coming on today. I do appreciate it. Uh, we will make sure we've got all of your links in our show notes. And um, you've already told us what you wanted people to take away from today. So thank you very much. And we will see everyone next week with our next interview. See you all next week.